Last night I was up until one in the morning because I had to do some mood boards for something that I'm working on. And I and then I woke up thinking about it. And mm -hmm. that is one of those things like if you go to bed thinking about it and you're excited about it and you wake up and you're sort of thinking the same thing, I think that's a really great indicator that you're doing something that is right. Hello, I'm Nina Westbrook and this is the Do Tell Relationship Podcast. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, a relationship expert, and a generally curious person fascinated by exploring the many ways we connect with one another. I'm here to guide you through the twists and turns of navigating your relationships with authenticity and compassion. Join me as we dive into candid conversations with health experts, celebrities, and overall interesting people exploring their philosophies on relationships, life, wellness, and making a lasting impact. So grab your favorite beverage, cozy up, and let's explore what truly matters in life. Welcome to the Dutel Relationship Podcast, where every episode is an invitation to deepen your connections and live your most authentic life. Let's get into it. Welcome back to another episode of the Do Tell Relationship Podcast. I'm really, really excited today. I'm here in New York and excited to be filming with my friend, Jennifer Fisher, who I've known for quite some time now. She's so big on family and we talk about family a lot. And that's one of the things that really connects us. But I think that tapping into her entrepreneurial mindset is going to be really beneficial for all of you guys listening and and also like social media. She's killing it on social media all the time. Please follow her if you don't already follow her. You're in for a good time. Um, it's inspirational. She's got quotes and um, also really delicious recipes. She's telling you all the cool places to go, the cool things to see, and also showing off all of her beautiful, amazing, gorgeous jewelry. So um, I can't wait to get into that with her. But first, another one of my favorite things to do is answer all the questions that you guys submit and want to chat about. So let's do that. Megan, do you want to read us the first question? Absolutely. So our first question today is, how can a woman who's in a relationship stop comparing herself to other women? Hmm. <laughs> That's a really good question, honestly. And I feel like this is something that all women can do. I don't know that it's specific to women in relationships, but I think that it's very, very easy to kind of get caught up in that comparison culture that we are seeing right now, especially in the age of social media. Um, it's easy to be on social media and scrolling TikTok or Instagram or whatever it is and see all of this, all of these women presenting themselves in a way that make you kind of question or think about your own life and your own situation. And we have a tendency to compare like where we are in our lives or what we're doing, what we have, what we don't have. If you're going into social media with the mindset of like, I'm going to go see these amazing things that that, but that doesn't really mean that that's what life is. You know, mm -hmm. like there's a whole life happening outside of and before and after the image or the video that I witness on social media. I think that's so important to recognize. But in terms of comparing, I think that when, if you are able to create a life, do the things that you love to do, um, be the woman that you want to be, explore the things you like to explore, um, go for the career that you want to go for, have the family that you want to have or don't. Um, I think that the key to not comparing what we have with others is just creating the life for yourself that you would want to have. And it sounds simple and easy, but just having the mindset and understanding and just learning to be like gracious and and grateful for the journey and where you are right now in the journey, rather than always looking forward to the future. There's different different ways that we compare ourselves. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a relationship, it could be as simple as you're at dinner and somebody walks by and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not as beautiful as she is or put together. Or over the past few years, I've changed. I'm not who my partner originally kind of started and fell in love with. Mm -hmm. 
how can, you know, finding that, like that confidence in who I am today and right. the choices I've made that I got to trust and feel safe that my partner is, is here for that, you right. know? And I mean, I totally agree with you. And I would say like, if there's something that you are not happy with, you have the ability and the choice to change that. You have a decision, the, the choice to work on whatever it is you want to work on. If like for me, sometimes I have a tendency to wear sweatpants all the time. <laughs> and, and, and this is very trivial. You're yeah, laughing. No, no. <laughs> But I think it's we're an all example. With you on that one. <laughs> it's just a small example of what I mean. And I started to feel like I wasn't quite happy with how I looked. I was like, I feel like I look like I don't feel. And it's not a representation of who I am to right. be in sweatpants like every single day that don't even match and Ugg boots or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um for school drop off. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to commit to wearing jeans. Have the outside a reflect days what's going week. on inside. Yeah, like I, I just wasn't happy with the way that I was presenting myself. And, right. and it had nothing to do with what anyone else looked like when right. they were doing drop off or going running errands or whatever the case may be. I just wasn't happy with myself. And I just didn't feel like it was giving me the energy and it wasn't giving me giving me the motivation I needed and the confidence, confidence stepping outside of my door in the morning that I would want to have to be able to just kind of tackle the world and and step foot in a room and do anything I needed to do. I was I was feeling like I was like running and hiding right. <laughs> um, and not wanting to be seen and trying to quickly get back to the house. Um, right. Well, and I feel like there's things, again, we go back to like thinking about internally, why is this making me compare? Why is that? Why am I going there? If I see somebody, it's maybe it's their fitness, the, the way they look, the way they dress, you mm-hmm. know, their success. But if I feel that insecurity, what am I doing or how can I address that internally and not kind of, you know, because really we shouldn't be doing that for our partner. We right. should be doing that for us. Right. right? And I think the key here and what it really comes down to is focusing on the thing, like focusing on yourself. Like you said, focusing internally, like on what it is that's causing the feelings. And then you have to take action and figure out what it is that you need to do to overcome feeling that way rather than using other people as a guide as to what you think you should be like, or what you think you should be doing. Just, Tap, check in, tap into what it is that you feel and what you think about yourself and start tackling those things if necessary. Right. Agreed. Okay. That's so, a good question. I know. It's kind of challenging because it's a little broad, Yeah. but it's, I feel like it's, there's it's so good. many different ways. Yep. Well, okay. The next one is again, not as much about kind of how you're feeling internally, or maybe it is, but it's how can you be there for your partner who's struggling mentally or with their mental health? How can you be there without kind of overwhelming them? Sure. Hmm. I feel like the best thing that we can do when we are in a relationship and maybe one one person or both in the relationship are struggling or having a difficult time, dealing with difficult feelings, um, is just be present. I think that being present is is more than enough a lot of the time. I feel like people always feel pressure and put pressure on themselves to want to fix things and change things and make it easy, um, make life easy for the people we love. But there's also there's also value in sitting and being just present and quiet and and even like being a soundboard or checking in like what is it you know obviously I know that you're going through this A plus B and I want to be here to support you so what does that look like for you what can what is it that I can do to support you while you are having or going through this this tough time, right? I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. Sometimes it's as easy as asking them what kind of support they need. Mm-hmm. And it's tough because of being with a partner who's struggling, 
it impacts everything, right? That's mm-hmm. somebody you're spending all of your days with. And mm-hmm. so it can easily start to impact you and your own well-being. And I think it's tough to kind of find that. Like, here, let's separate these two. How can I support you? I definitely think asking specifically, how can I support mm-hmm. you? Um, and also, I love this one concept of saying and instead of but. Like, you've been really doing this and doing great, but I think something's going on here. Instead saying, you've been doing really great, and mm-hmm. I think maybe you would benefit from talking to somebody too, like mm-hmm. unbiased, like kind of that leading with curiosity and right. saying and. And I'm here, you know. I love that. And I think that and, I love that and. <laughs> and. <laughs> I'm going to add to that. Um, I think that it's important to be, like to like you said, when there's one person who might be struggling or having a difficult time, it has a, a, a huge impact on everyone else in the household, right? So taking care of yourself is so mm-hmm. important. We want to jump in there and save the day and fix things. Some yeah. things take a lot of time. And if you are working in overdrive and constantly worrying and stressed out, not only about your own situation and circumstances, but about with your partners as well, you're going to get burnt out. You're going to get, you know, overwhelmed. And so I think that taking care of yourself Mm -hmm. in this kind of circumstance and scenario is really important because you may have to pick up the slack around the house. Or if you have children, you guys have children, pick up the slack with the children, whatever the case may be. But you're also being able to take things off of your partner's plate, right? Right. So you're taking things off of their plate while they're having a difficult time and they are working through their own feelings and emotions, um, which means there's more for you to do, which means that you're going to get tired. So if you're not taking care of yourself, then the whole, you know, unfortunately, like who's going to be doing it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that the key is to make sure you are checking in with your therapist if you're in therapy or checking in with your friends and your community Mm -hmm. and your support system that's helping to pour into you while you are doing all the things that you can to help your partner and pour into your partner, right? You got to replenish mm-hmm. somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh-huh. and, and, um, if your partner is not able to give that to you at that time, then you, there are so many other people in your life that I'm sure would be willing to help out. I love that. I didn't even think of that. Like yeah. thinking, yeah, kind of, yeah, taking care of yourself as you take care of somebody else. Um, okay. Final question. Last question for today. How can someone get past? their feelings of failure and kind of regrets in life and really believe in the fact that they can be what they want to be, what they aspire to be. How can you kind of move past those feelings of failure? Oh, that's a tough one because sometimes when things don't work out and, you know, you put a lot of energy and time and effort into something, it could feel quite devastating. Um, And I will say that not everything in in life, not everything is going to work out on the first try, right? If everything we all set out to accomplish was accomplished <laughs> the first time we tried, like we would be, what kind of world would we be need living a, a podcast. We would need <laughs> Yeah, anything. like I would not be here, trust <laughs> right. me. Therapist. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it's, you just have to really, really truly understand like that, a journey is not a linear thing. There are going to be some setbacks. There are going to be some growing pains. And as long as you're learning and you're you're gaining experience and you're growing, you're always going to be moving and making way for the road of head, right? Mm-hmm. So, and I think that not, you know, looking at things that happen in our lives as failures or, or, um, approaching things that way could be a little bit more detrimental to your emotional wellness, but instead like re, re, um, it's like reframe. Yeah. Like reframing the way you think about it is like, okay, so this wasn't my opportunity or this wasn't the relationship that was meant for me, but you know, I'm so grateful that I was able to learn this, that, and the other for the next opportunity, for the next audition, for the next um, job interview, mm-hmm. for my next relationship. And I'm going to take the things that I learned from that experience and be able to 
um, you know, and be able to implement them in in my life as I move forward. And so I just think a, a simple reframing and a shift in your perspective is is one way to to think about it. But just overall remembering that we are imperfect people and we're going to make mistakes. Mm. We're not always going to get it right. I can almost guarantee that everything that you set out to do is not going to work out the first time perfectly all the time. Like I would bet lots of money on that. So keep that in mind and know that the people that you do see that are thriving and doing the thing that you want to do or they're the place you want to be, um, if you ask them, I'm pretty sure they're going to tell you that they had experienced a lot of no's or the doors not being open at certain times. And the thing that got them there is their resilience and their ability and willingness to continue to work hard and to keep moving forward. I feel like you do such a good job on Benet talking about the growth mindset. Yeah. And there's the exercises around that. And I loved that because that's very much, yeah, that's very much part of that, that growth mindset. Yeah. Everything is an opportunity and then, you know, every challenge, every setback and how can we reframe those? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's really great. Love it. Okay, thank you. I think I feel like I hear Jennifer. I think Jennifer's in here. So yeah. I'm so excited. Let's get into it with Jennifer. We'll be right back. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome Finally. to Do Tell. I changed the name. I know. I was like, wait, she changed the name. Isn't that? I mean, what I, made I you feel? Do because I like that. I just I felt like I wanted to kind of play off of the card game but also do tell just leaves it open to I like it's the like name. more conversational I like it it feels like, and it feels white it feels broader yeah which I think too which is what I think you ha- you have more to more to cover yeah with all of us so I yeah. think I like it I think it was a smart move okay thank you it's a good business move good rebrand yeah. okay so with the segue yeah, is yeah, right you did, it. you did it you did it I want to talk about like business I can't even name, like, I try to kind of name some of the things that you've been doing, and it's just so much. And I feel like I really admire your entrepreneurial spirit and your, yeah. on, like, your enthusiasm, your ridiculous social media accounts, <laughs> and you love all the same things as I do, food and jewelry and family. So I just love all those things. I, like, I yeah. don't know. I don't know. So tell me, like, how... Like, have did you ever imagine that this would be your life? And even before no. you even get into that, I feel like you were you were really good at changing your passions into like your career, right? Well, I really I think it's really important that whatever you want to do needs to be something that you truly love. And right. so, if it's something that you truly love that you end up sort of doing, and you think that you can make something out of it and make a business out of it, then why not? Mm-hmm. Because I, I mean, listen, there's a there's everyone always says, oh, it's you know, I've started a jewelry brand or I've started this business. I'm like, great, you can do that if you have the capital and you can throw things up on social media. But it's really it's you have to do it every day for a very long time to make sure that it's <laughs> successful. You know, so it's it's something you have to really love what you're doing and so yes you know some of the things are a little weird that i do like the salt and and things like that it's not weird at all but people are like you're a jewelry designer why do you make salts and then some people think it's bath salt and i'm like no it's salt for your food and, <laughs> you know and it's just i think that you have to really stay true to who you are and what you love to do you mm-hmm. know and it's sort of like what you've been doing with your life and evolving into different things and mm-hmm. once you've had your family and and changing course and I think course correction is something that everyone needs to not be fearful of and mm-hmm. and and follow sort of like and I hate saying trust your gut but it's so true right. sort of follow what you what your passions are and what you really love to do because at the end of the day if you want to make a business out of it you have to want to get up and want to do it every single day. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that is like the biggest lesson for me is just knowing like how lo- much time everything takes cuz like yeah. you said it's Starting the business is, you know, if you follow these steps, you can start the business. If you have the resources, you can start the business. But it's like the time and the energy that has to go into the business and knowing when it's time to grow and when it's time to expand and add and take away. And it is 
stressful. It's stressful. It's emotional. It's everything. It's it's like all the feels, you know. It's and it's like it, you know. A, a great example is last night. I was up until one in the morning because I had to do some mood boards for something that I'm working on, and I and then I woke up thinking about it. And mm-hmm. it, that is one of those things. Like if you go to bed thinking about it and you're excited about it, and you wake up and you're sort of thinking the same thing, I think that's a really great indicator that you're doing something that is right mm-hmm. and that you're doing something that you want to love. Because if you wake up in the morning, and you're like, oh shit, I have to go do that again. Mm-hmm. It's not going to really work. No, I remember being in school and just loving it. Like I would love to go to school and see my classmates and work on projects together. And I felt like I was only like that in my graduate program because I just loved learning about people and communi- communicating and connections and like what really makes us go. And so it was a completely different experience than undergrad where I was kind of just checking boxes, you right, know? Right. You finally got into your zone of like, okay, this is what I want to be doing. Like, I want to be discovering this about people. And it's, and I, I don't think it's until you get like a taste of it until you really kind of realize, like, okay, this is, this is what I want to be doing. And this is the direction that I'm going to go. And I'm going to do, and every day it's like, okay, well, I'm going to do, and I, I say this to people all the time, like do something, whatever, do something small every day. It doesn't have to be big. Something small every day to put mm-hmm. you in the right direction of whatever your dream is. Because at the end of the day, and I've learned this recently, I've had a very interesting <laughs> <Recently>? year. Recently? <laughs> no, no, no. This year in particular, I've had a very interesting year that, you know, you can't control the outcome. I'm right. a big believer and yes, I'm kind of woo woo California, but like I'm also like a it's it's real it's reality. Like your your direction is kind of set. You can do things every day to try to help change and and go in the direction that you want to go into, but every day something's going to happen that you can't control mm-hmm. that is going to change your direction. And mm-hmm. you don't know what that's going to be. So all you can do for yourself is do something small every day that's going to continue in the path that you want to be going. And you have to be able to handle the negativity mm-hmm. or those distractions or those course direction changes that happen every day because they happen every day. Exactly. And you don't know what it's going to be. Wow. I really like that. Doing something small every day that's going to conti- like move you along your path. Yeah. It doesn't acceptance. have to be it, because you know what? It, want those small things, it takes so many of them. But once they get all together, right. then it's like a big moment. And it's so amazing. And you remember why you're doing all these small things in the first place. It's like building our businesses. It's the same thing. People are like, oh, you know, how do you, you know, you have to get there. I'm like, I've been doing this every day. Like, this is like the same <laughs> thing every day for 18 years. You know, Shane's in college now. I started my business when Shane was born. So right. it's like, it's every day. It's a mind. It's a mindset. Like you came in, <laughs> <laughs> you came in here like ready. We were like having this moment, putting our makeup on, yeah. like touching our makeup <laughs> up. And you're like, oh, this is good. Take a, a video of this because it's it's so it's just so engraved in part a part of your every day, and it's so important and it's so good. It's what makes you great, I think. But also, like when you put yourself out there, people want to see what you're like when you're not. You know, everything is so is so edited and curated, and everyone only th- sees the perfection on Instagram and all mm-hmm. these places and, and whatever. I mean, maybe not on TikTok and things like that, but you know, it's. For people to see like, oh, that's so cool. Like I got to see them before they were going on. And just people want to see things like that. Sharing is caring. I agree with you 100%. And I'm trying to do a better job. I'm not as like outgoing and out there and forward facing as you are. But I are though when you sit down, I feel like yeah, but this is where I thrive. I thrive in like a one on one kind of setting. But I'm not, you know, but you're amazing. You Thank should be you. you should be doing more of that. Just do more. You're so confident in your business and and all of the small things that you're doing every day to build your business, build your brand, build your company. Were there any times of <laughs> Sorry, uncertainty or doubt along the way that you had to overcome? I know. I mean, it's a every I day. Ha- I know. So I, how did you like how do you deal with that? How how have you been able to overcome that? Well, I say this all the time. I'm scared every day. I wake up scared every day. <laughs> no, it's true. And people no, are like, I understand. People are like, well, that's that's kind of crazier. And then some people are like, that's amazing because and and certain people that I do business with are like, you know, that's great because if you weren't scared, that would mean that you're too cocky or you, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, you should wake up fearful. Like, there's a lot of people in this world that might want to be doing the same thing that you're doing, and it's not about. It's not about ego or being fearful of like people taking over, but it's more of like what I've built and what I'm trying to build. I'm not even there yet. And so I'm like, it's sort of like every day I'm making different decisions and I want to make sure I'm making the right decisions. So I'm sort Mm -hmm. of like, 
you know, every day you're like, is this the right decision? Is this the wrong decision? You don't know. And a lot of times it's the wrong, wrong and a lot of times it's the right. <laughs> so it's one of those things where that, that's why I think it's also really important in a business and in a life and to, to realize like th- there's always bad days and good days too. That's another thing. But you, if you think about it in a year, and I don't know who, who someone major said this, and I'm being an idiot for not realizing who it is, but a year from now, you're going to look back and not even remember what mm. it was. It seems like such a big deal in that moment, in that mm-hmm. day. But in a year, you're not going to even remember what it was that was worrying you normally. Right. Or stressing you out. Right. So, and half the time, it's something in your head. That's another thing. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like half the time, it's something that you're like making up some scenario or narrative in your head that like might not even been going on. We you're do just that. Stressing out. Mm-hmm. Anxiety is real. So, yeah. Like, you got to like take a chill on that. You've got to like, okay, realize where it's coming from. Try to kind of like move through that. It's hard. It can be really debilitating. And I talk to people all day, every day on social media, a lot of women, a lot of moms who are like, I can't get past want, uh, the, the fear of failure. I can't get past um, the embarrassment of failure. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm too scared to to actually do it because I, it's not perfect. Right. And that's one of those things where it's like, well, you got it. I think it's so important to show your imperfections. Oh, you know? my goodness. You it's know? so funny. I mean, not even on our skin, but, like, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Not like, there. You know what I mean? But like, no, I totally understand what you're saying. And it's so important. I feel like just understanding and hearing like I we were talking about this before you came on is is um people feeling kind of stuck after what they perceive as a different failure or whatever the case may be and it's not you know growth and and is not linear you know we kind of go two steps forward and sometimes we're going to take a couple steps backwards mm-hmm. like you said it's trial and error mm-hmm. some things work out some don't it's not a straight line no i wake up the same way i'm like oh my gosh for me, my fear in the morning comes from if I'm making this decision, is this a waste of my time? Mm-hmm. Like I hate wasting time just because I feel like I don't have enough, you know? But we don't know how much time we have. That's No. The thing. And I'm not even talking about death. I'm just talking about I have to, I want to maintain my relationships with my family, my friends. I want to do things that I love. I want time for myself. I like. It. I got to ske- I I have to figure out how I'm going to be spending my time and if this is taking me away from the, like the priorities and and taking time away from the things that I know I want to be doing then that makes me scared if especially if it's not going to be what I want it to be so it's like making a choice and just trusting in the process you know? Well, you're also in a different position than I am. You have younger kids. Mm-hmm. So you also are like in it. Like I'm in it. Very, I'm like you are me. In, you are in it. Deep in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You are knee deep in it. So your daily decisions, you don't have as much time. You know, I'm I'm older than you. My kids are older. Shane's in college. Drew's about to go into college. She has another year. But like when you're in it with young kids like that, your priorities are very different. Mm-hmm. And so your time is so stretched because they need you so much more. Mm-hmm. And you want to make sure that you're present and you're not missing from any events or things that they're doing. And, you know, it's like mommy, mommy still. Right. So you, you are in a particular like – tough time right. because they are still so dependent upon you. Mm-hmm. And so your day, your freedom to make choices for your time is like is this much. Like, <laughs> yeah, like that. Like you can't even go to the bathroom alone. Like you're still in that spot. You know what I mean? Like you're still in that, you know, basically. So that will change mm-hmm. as you get older mm-hmm. and your kids get older mm-hmm. and evolve. And you'll see that and you'll be like, Jen, I remember when Jen said that to me. Like, Yeah, but, but this is also my baby. Like yeah. being here with you is my baby because mm-hmm. it's what I it's love. Important. I want to do it. I want to have like, you know, important conversations. And I love learning and growing and understanding people, you know. So this is great. Building my, bi- my business is my baby also. So, mm-hmm. but my business, like you said, it requires so much time. I mean, I started my business after Shane was born. So, uh, you know, I was still, I mean, my kids obviously were younger and I hadn't even had Drew yet. But you, you know, as, as they sort of grow and get older, like you'll have more time for your business Mm -hmm. and you'll, you'll, your business might change. Like Mm -hmm. my business has changed over the years too. And you'll see, you'll see, it's really, it's, and it's important for you as a wife to rest too. And, and as partners in life and everything that you're doing that you're satisfied mm-hmm. and that you're doing things that make you, you know, feel fulfilled right. and independent 
you know, it's not easy, I can imagine, to be married to a professional athlete and like that what comes along with that. Right. And so the time for you is really important mm -hmm. because you need to support three young kids, Russ, and everything that goes along with that and being a wife to someone <laughs> like that. You know, it's that's very different than what I have. I didn't mm -hmm. have a husband like that. It's, mm. diff it's very different. So it is like the life that I live is very much so a juggling act I'm of sure. a lot of very important things. But you know what? Like it really helps to have an extremely supportive partner. You know, like I could not be happy in this life if I didn't have someone who was as equally invested in both of our dreams, right. you Me know, too. and children. So, yeah, Me but too. we make it work. I know yeah. you guys have the most lovely family. Well, Kevin came and like ran my business for eight years. You know, he's he came in and, and, and left his job um, working on Wall Street to come and help build the business. And I will never I mean, I could not have done it without him and mm -hmm. his support and him. He's the best co-parenting parent to our kids. He's the best partner. Like, I think we have like very similar relationships in we our do. partners. Our, fa our family life is very just, similar. Mm -hmm. Very similar. Um, Super supportive, like just like grounded at home husbands. Mm -hmm. and, and Kevin will step in and do whatever I need, whenever I need. It's I, I'm really fortunate. It's so funny that we naturally gravitated into this conversation because I was going to ask you, with everything that you're doing, how important of a role have your relationships? Because when you're naturally like a good person and you're a kind person and you're thoughtful and you just you're you just connect, I'm sure, with everyone that not everyone, but a lot of people, any people that you come across, you build like good friendships and relationships with people. I'm really fortunate. Like yeah. I'm really fortunate to, you know, the people that I found that I found like the most amazing relationships with are are people that have come along the way that I didn't expect. You know what I mean? There's like people like you guys and there's people that like I did a, a home collaboration for CB2 and like mm -hmm. Ryan Turf, who's the guy who's in charge of CB2, who runs CB2 is this amazing guy. Like there's like people that you meet along the way and like you know, that you work on these different things with that are like, and Sammy who worked on that too. And there's just people that come along the way that like, that aren't necessarily in fashion. They're mm -hmm. like incredible because fashion is a hard business. Mm. It's not easy. No, it's, it's like not. crazy. So, you know, <laughs> uh, so I, I've found a lot of um, uh, personal uh, enjoyment and pleasure in friends that are sort of outside of the circle of, of fashion, which mm. is like, you should have all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I have my girlfriends, all my best girlfriends, none of them work in fashion. Mm -hmm. Most of them are stay-at-home moms and they're amazing. And like after this, I'm going to go meet them for a birthday lunch. There's a birthday lunch. You know, I don't normally get to do that. But I was like, okay, this is going to be great. I'm so excited. I've been, you know, it's hard. And I don't know about you when you're trying to follow your dreams and paths and start new ventures. And, you know, I've been really busy with work over the last year and very like – motivated to some new things that we're working on. And I haven't been the best friend to my friends. I have mm -hmm. to say, I haven't been around. I also just haven't been drinking as much alcohol. I haven't been, I've been trying to take care of myself a little I bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and that also changes your relationships too, mm -hmm. um, at home with your friends and work. Mm -hmm. um, that's I a mean, whole other thing we can talk about. Yeah. Well, we can talk about it. I feel like that's important. And with everything that you're kind of going through, I wanted to know what some of the most important relationships have that you, what What are some of the most important relationships that you've had that have impacted you throughout your, 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 I don't I mean, I want to say like growth or yeah. success. Cause I, I do consider your business to be like a major, huge success. Thank you. Yeah. It's been really hard. I mean, listen, we've I've bootstrapped this business with my husband with no investors for the last 18 years. So, yeah. you know, those things change and evolve. And I'm very excited for the future. You know, we're there's some cool things happening. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the most important relationships that have helped me are honestly my friends that are not in fashion, my friends that have nothing to do with what I do for work, mm -hmm. my real girlfriends. My we, we call ourselves the Tribeca Trotters. Like it's like there's a group of us <laughs> that live in Tribeca and it's like it's that's our text group call. So it's like because everyone meets for drinks at like, you know, six o'clock or whatever. And it's like who's game? And it's everyone goes together. And there's like six of us. Uh -huh. um, and those people are really, really important to me. You know, mm -hmm. there are some people from work. There's some people that I look up to as sort of mentors that have kind of come along the way. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, the ex-publisher of Vogue magazine, um, Susan Pegman, has been like a huge mentor to me. She's incredible. Um, but, and kind of like all over the place, different people. Mm-hmm. And I think it's kind of like how you have to – it's like your friends. Like not your friends are not all the same, you know. So sort of like the people that you look up to in business and that you feel can – you know, I have I have friends in all different – types of businesses, you know, people that work in food, people that work in, you know, all over the place. And that's mm-hmm. what makes us who we are. And, it's, right. you know, you kind of, and the one thing I do have to say is the biggest mistake as a businesswoman, business person, Uh-oh. is that, no, you know, I made the mistake of when I started out and I, I have listening to people that were big in fashion. And mm. I, they're like, you need to do this. You can't do, you need to do this, this way and this, this way. And those were like some of my biggest failures because mm-hmm. they've never been in a business like my business. They've never never done what I've done. They're not me. They're not thinking the way that I'm thinking. So it's, you you have to, you have to take advice with a grain of salt and apply that to your business and your practice and who you are and where you're trying to go in your own way, not take it literally. I think that you're so right because each of us, like you said, like people want to see you for who you are. They want your ideas. They want, I feel like in today's social society, like people want to know who you are and they want to get to know you and your brand, right? They want to be able to go along the journey with you and see what life is like for you. And you do a really good job of that. And it kind of brings it all together. Um, Before we continue, I want to take a break. And Mm -hmm. when we come back, I want to talk more about friendship. If you're enjoying this episode, make sure to follow us on social media at Do Tell Podcast for more behind the scenes footage and clips. Visit us on BenetByNina.com for exclusive e-workshops, wellness guides, fitness and nutrition resources, and my Do Tell conversation card game, all created to encourage a lifetime of growth, inspiration and personal development. If you want to hear more episodes like this one, subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast, where you will find all of my past episodes and interviews with other incredible guests. So to me, you were talking about before we took a break, how friendship is important. And I couldn't agree more. And I agree with you. Like I've lived in many different states. I've done all sorts of things. I it's kind of crazy. The I guess group of French friends you kind of pick up and I like to bring my friends together and just mix everybody around. But have, have you question. found what is your question? question you. Go. How many of your friends have you kept along the way from moving from like okay, because there was UCLA basketball. Uh-huh. There was there's life before that. Right. High school. Yeah. Right. Childhood. Right. High school, <laughs> child I mean I have, I, it's funny, I have one of my best friends who I still talk to to this day almost every day was my best friend since I was three years old. Mm-hmm. I am not close to, that's, well, I don't want to talk about me, I want to talk about you. Okay. I was curious, moving around so much, like how many friends do you still, and are, are they friends? Like are your friends from different cities and states friends? Okay. I'm curious. So I definitely have picked up like good friends from everywhere that I've been. Um. And I make them friends because I feel like French, good finding good friends is hard. I'm such a girl's girl and I love getting good people together. And so each of my friends I know can use like additional support and love and like sisterhood and camaraderie or whatever you want to call it. And so the more really amazing women that I can put together and introduce so that we could all share each other the like the better i feel in that way too so for me yes i have a lot of friends i've kind of picked up friends all over the place um and i am no longer friends with some people for whatever reason and um i always like to reference this story but first former first lady michelle obama i don't know during her book tour she used this this um I don't know if it's called a metaphor, but of like uh, like climbing a mountain and some people kind of losing oxygen along the way. Yes. <laughs> and, and they just couldn't make the trek, essentially. They couldn't make the climb. What has that been like for mm. you in your relationships and how have you kind of handled, you know, we're going to say success. It's so weird to talk about, but like... 
you you're pretty successful. I know. I, I know. Feel like I am. It's funny. I'm like, what? <laughs> you are. You're pretty successful. You've accomplished so much. How has that impacted your relationships over the years? Well, I don't feel like I'm even close. I feel like I'm like just getting started. But relationships, yeah, it's really affected relationships because I, like I and this is a, I'm so glad that you started to talk about this because I've been kind of a really not great friend to my friends over the last year because of a couple of those reasons that I had to personally make some choices and changes because I just don't have as much time mm-hmm. as I did before. Mm-hmm. And the time that I have um, I wanted to make sure that I'm focused. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the times, to be totally honest, like I can't go out and and go to dinner and and have a bunch of drinks and be be f- not functioning the next day to where I have to be really clear every day. And mm-hmm. I, you know, we used to go out and have a really good time all the time. And I'd wake up the next day and it would really affect ha- my, you know, my brain fog. You know, I'm I'm older. Mm-hmm. I'm 52 years old. Mm-hmm. So I, it would affect how I felt the next day. I was literally like dragging on the ground and I was like, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. And I can't go to lunch and drink during the day. And like, I wish I could, but I, I can't. <laughs> I can't. I, I can't. I wish I could. <laughs> but I can't. <laughs> I can't. Okay, but so the relationships that you That's think changed, have too. been able to, you know, be flexible and adaptable, like, do your friends mind that? Do people mind that? Not my really good friends. My really good friends are also, and they also kind of put it back on me, and they're not wrong. They're kind of like, well, Jen, you also, because I'm like, you guys, you didn't invite me to this. You wanna, they're like, but Jen, you didn't really want to go. I'm mm-hmm. like, you know what? You're right. So I have to also own that. Mm-hmm. So there's that part of that responsibility mm-hmm. that you have to take that your friends that are really good friends pick up on the fact that, A, you're not drinking as much. B, you, you're not drinking at all. Or you're busy at work or you have things to do. And mm-hmm. you just, you're going to say no. So they know it. So they stop inviting you. Mm-hmm. So you also have to kind of take ownership for if you say no a certain you know amount of times, they're going to stop asking you, even right. your best friends. So there's both sides of that. Mm-hmm. It's know? like a certain level of understanding and confidence and val like you have to have an uh, like you have to know the value you bring to a relationship and you just have to also have grace for friends and people especially like you're talking about your best friend from age three or whatever Mm -hmm. the case may be like has been able to see you grow evolved and along the journey with you for so long some of those longer term friendships and i think it's easier for people to understand when they've been there and they see Correct. you and they know you so Correct. well but it's sometimes new friends that you have to kind of prove that you are a good friend you are a good person you just really don't really don't have the time or you really can't make it yeah okay so can you talk a little bit more about your relationship food with food and your passion for food and how it ties into your overall wellness journey I know. I have a great relationship with food. No, I do. I I, I, and I haven't always like I. Okay, so I grew up in like toxic eighties diet culture. Throw yourself, but you know, go to like these disgusting places and eat fake food to lose weight, like that kind of garbage. Mm-hmm. Like, and so that's why I think I'm such a big believer now. Well, first of all, I have Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease. Mm-hmm. And then I also went through chemotherapy when I was 30 for a desmoid tumor that I have on my chest wall that cannot be removed. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've had health issues and struggles my life, my whole life. And I've always sort of, and I was always sort of struggling with like, you know, five to 10 pounds of just bloating and swelling. And I was like, oh, I got to stop eating this. And I was always like yo-yoing and doing all this kind of garbage and mm-hmm. eating fake food and bars and trying every program that I possibly could and paying whatever doctor for whatever program to do whatever mm-hmm. it was. And nothing Which was worked. the culture. Right. And that's what and we were works. being fed at yeah. the time also. Yeah. It goes into yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Literally being fed. And like nothing was wor- <laughs> like fed preservatives and like disgusting stuff that if you can't pronounce it, you shouldn't be putting in your body. Right. So I finally like I – I've been gluten-free for years because of my autoimmune disease, and I have a great endocrinologist here in New York that's helped me get off helped me get off of gluten. But I was still eating dairy, and I was still not really reading my labels, and I was eating a ton of gluten-free products that were filled with preservatives and garbage, not really realizing that that was disgusting packaged mm-hmm. processed foods. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't until I started doing my own research online. I'm like, Some, something's got to give. Like, I can't keep doing all this stuff. It's like this yo-yo cycle. And I started just like, it was honestly during COVID, I started kind of reading around, trying to find different people who I connected with. And I read a book. Um, I talk about this all the time. It's Dr. Mm-hmm. Will Cole, who was now in front of mine. Um, and it, his book, he, some of his books are a little um, – uh, 
tough for me because they're very strict mm -hmm. um, for my personality. Because mm -hmm. I need a little like room to be like, can I help? Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I need alcohol. I need this. Or I need, you know, inside most books are like, you can't do any of that. Mm -hmm. So I read his book, Ketotarian. And it was when I built my store in Beverly Hills. Ketotarian. Ketotarian okay. by Dr. Will Cole. And I, it was when we were still under the 10 day quarantine going back and forth during COVID to LA and, and, and New York. And I had built my Beverly Hills store mm -hmm. and I had to quarantine for 10 days. It was oh my insane. Goodness. So I was reading all these books. And that book is one of the books that I read. And I was like, okay, I can try this, but I'm not going to do that. I'm still going to drink alcohol. Maybe I'll switch to red wine. And so I'll do all the things he told me to do, which is no dairy, no gluten, no – so it's no grain. Mm -hmm. So it's no rice, no – not not Which like, is doable. Doable. If it's you have the rice. resources and the ability, it's doable. Do it. Cauliflower rice from Trader Joe's is 100 – or 100 – is $1.29 a bag or something like that. Like, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, I – there's ways to do which it. Which I love which your videos when you go into the love grocery store and show us. It's right? so good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I want a bunch of two. So, like, you know, it's <laughs> – it's true. Yeah. So, you know, I, I the, all of those things, I, just sort of, I was like, I'm going to give myself three days. And mm -hmm. I was in LA. And I was like, I'm going to three days. I, and I loved cheese. Cheese was my thing. Mm, like, I loved dairy cheese. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go and find, buy a bunch of, because I'm stuck in this hotel. And instead of running, I'm going to buy every kind of vegan cheese I can get. Mm -hmm. So I remember going to Whole Foods because Erwan wasn't there at the time. And I got a bunch of vegan cheeses. And I'd be like, this is disgusting. This is disgusting. <laughs> this is disgusting. And I'm like, mm, okay, I can actually eat that one. So I was sort of did my own. And that's Recently. kind of how it started of me. Started starting to show people like oh. what I like and what I don't like, and I was like, "Let me save you some money, people. Don't buy these because these taste like this." But maybe they'll <laughs> like it. I thought it tasted like a foot, but like, okay, you know, you could try. We so, need to go grocery shopping together. Oh, also. anytime you want to go. Okay. Anytime. I like. I was like, I kind of wanted to start a whole TV show about like taking different people grocery shopping. That's a whole other story. Please like, sign right? me up. Fun, yes. right? Yes. Of like how you want to eat and how we how we should, how. To, but reading labels is also so important. So you don't realize another thing is gums. So. There's guar gum, xanthan gum, all kinds of gums that are shelf stabilizers that are put into foods in the United, mainly United States, to, so they can sit longer on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And we're ingesting them all day long, along with cane sugar, seed oils, which is canola oil, you know, any kind of vegetable oil, mm -hmm. you know, corn oil, uh, mm -hmm. soybean oil, like. You shouldn't be eating those things. The moment you you could be having a healthy salad and you buy the salad dressing that I used to buy. And it was Kevin's favorite, and it was made with soybean oil. And you know that's why you should make your own dressing. Ruins the salad. Ruins everything. It ruins, because, the, ruins the point of having a salad. Ruins everything because you're swollen and you're inflamed. You're like, why do I feel terrible? Why am I bloated? Why, why, why is everything not working right? Like, and it's all these things that add up. Mm -hmm. So I did it for three days with the cheese, and I was like, okay, I can keep doing this because I was like, a week is too long. Like, give it three days and try to like cut out as much as you can of like, mm -hmm. the stuff that you're currently eating. You don't realize your condiments, everything you're also putting on your clean foods. I hate saying clean. Um, more like foods that are more pure, like your mm -hmm. pure piece of protein. Whole foods. Whole, no. You know, like straight protein, straight vegetables, what, yeah. whatever. I don't know, whatever you guys want to call it. I call it like intuitive eating. Like it's – I know I know how to cook it. I know what to put on it and I know what to do to it. So the it's items, not the, the produce. Produce? Pro it's, but it's protein too. So it's all of those things. So I used to cook my chicken in canola oil. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. It's really mm -hmm. bad. It'll mm -hmm. make you swell. Okay, so like, what oil? What's your favorite oil? The best oil to fry in is cured olive cured olive oil. K y o o r d. I've been using it forever. It's incredible. I use it for salad dressing. It's a little heavy for salad dressings, but I drizzle it, mm -hmm. and you can cook it. It's the high phalanic oil, olive oil that you can cook high, at higher high heats. temperatures. Yeah, for higher temperatures. Okay, um, and that kind of so that's what you should cook your meat in. It's all of those things, and 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 also you know. Packaged foods, like your favorite tortilla chips are probably done with like the wrong way. It's like all the things. And it's like, and then there's cane sugar hidden in everything. I also don't do agave. I don't do legumes. Sometimes I do. I had black beans last night. What am I saying? But I, you know, I don't eat beans as much as I used to just because mm -hmm. for me personally, I don't feel fantastic mm -hmm. after. Sparkling water is another controversial one that people. Ooh, that's a rough one. That's a rough one. Well, because half the time natural flavors are in it and that's not natural. Mm -hmm. Like there's stuff, there's, it's all chemicals. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're going to have it, have it with lemon and lime or, you know, mm -hmm. or just drink regular water. Right. You know, I was obsessed with peach flavored water for for years, oh, not realizing that yeah. I was like, you know, why so am I always bloated? Stuff. Yeah, why do I always feel oh, terrible? Oh, is that what it is with the sparkling water? For, for me is it, personally, okay. Yeah. Do, because I feel like bloating here. comes from sparkling. Like for me, I get bloated just from the bubbles. Yeah. 
But I wonder, it could be the flavor, though. Some also. say it's inflammatory because it's a lot of the flavors that they use in it are not real flavors. Okay. So that, that's good But to also know. just the water itself. Yeah. So there's all those things that you, we would buy boxes of and all the pretty different yummy mm, flavors. Yeah. All the no. fruity flavors. No more. No, just stick fruit in your water. Hello. Put a grapefruit Delicious. and a lime and in your better. sparkling water and boom. Or non-sparkling. And then, you know, the bubbles. Like, it's just, Delicious. it's better. No soda. Like, I, mm-hmm. and then the alcohol thing is a whole other thing. But like. Try not to order a cosmopolitan. Like get a, uh, you know, a glass of red wine, a glass of organic red wine if you can do it. Mm-hmm. Or you know, try not to be drinking the sugary rosé all the time. Or mm-hmm. drink tequila with lime. That's what, mm-hmm. or vodka with lemon. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all the things like that. Just keep it. I drink Chopin vodka because it's potato vodka. Mm-hmm. You don't realize Tito's corn, Belvedere, and all those other ones. You know, they're all made with different. So it's grains. Mm-hmm. So it's grain vodka. We have to wrap up. What is the best piece of advice you've ever? received I, was gonna, I thought you were gonna say you can give um that i've ever I know, received I threw a little wrench in there you did that i've ever received mm-hmm. um do it for yourself not for others mm-hmm. that's a good piece of advice mm-hmm. because a lot of the times these days especially like people are doing things trying to put something out there thinking that people are gonna like it mm-hmm. it doesn't work no and that's a really good piece of advice right you know I what I love mean? that. It's yeah. true. That's a good piece of advice I received. Yeah. Do it for yourself, not for other, not for others. Okay. I really appreciate that because the people that are meant to be there for you or support you or be a part of your business or whatever the case may be, they're going to find you. They're going to see what they see and they're going to love it. And they're going to love it for who you are. That works for parenting. That works for everything. Like I It's know. a really good piece of advice because it kind of like it's, it covers everything. Okay. <laughs> Last thing is, I always ask one of my questions from Dutel Card Game. Do you guys have it? Did you send it to me? I'm going to send you and the couple's one. It's oh, so cute for date night. I'm going to send you both. Okay. Um. So the question is, what does living a happy life mean to you? Living a happy life to me is freedom. Ooh. It's freedom. I. I it's freedom because I've really realized that recently that if you don't have – the time, the freedom of the time, the freedom of like the grace of like taking your time, mm-hmm. the freedom of oh my gosh, right? It's amazing. Like sitting in bed, or like the freedom of like of it's like being on vacation. It's like freedom. Like, <sighs> do you know what I mean? There's nothing like that. I okay. So <laughs> first of all, when I came here, I came to New York to film episodes, and I got to my room and I called Russell, and I was like. Is this what it's like to just be on your own and have that this type of freedom? Like, I didn't break one ounce of sweat in the airport, like running after kids or lugging a bunch of stuff. Like, I was like walking slow to the gate, Mm -hmm. walking slow to baggage claim. And then I get to the room and I'm like, huh, what am I going to do? I think I'm going to unpack. Like, who does that? I'm only here for one night. I unpacked. I ordered room service. Like, I was in the bed. I was like, this is the most amazing life I could ever dream. Like, this freedom. is beautiful. Yeah. And and that's what it is. It's just Yeah. I was in bed freedom. sick yesterday not having to go to work. And <laughs> no one was at home for, like, a bit. And I was like, this is really nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. But it's true. Yeah. It, those things that you, you, you know, you don't have anymore because you have so much responsibility. I know. Okay. That I really like that. Okay. Well, thank you so much. This oh was God. so great. This is so great. Thanks <laughs> for having me. I'm so happy I got to see you. I know. Just I'm on, so a, good on to see another you too. friendship level. I know. I'm always like, Gotta see you in your And thank busy. you for my goodies. My my you brought oh, me some new Jennifer flavor. Salt. So, tell me what the flavor is really good. The quick. new one is everything style spicy. And it's Ooh. based off of so our yeah. most popular salt is the spicy salt, which isn't spicy. It's a Korean chili flake, so it's more of an umami. Mm-hmm. So there's universal salt, which is the first salt, and that has dill, lemon, parsley, chili flake. There's no garlic or onion in that one for people that because I I did that one because I wanted to put it on my eggs in the morning and not have garlic breath when I went to work, Ooh, like yeah. dragon breath. Big, so there's that important. one. Yeah, but then the other, but you use it, you can use it to season, and there's curry also, which is a Japanese curry. It's so yummy on avocado and tomatoes. But use it to season your proteins and then finish it, and you can mix them. So like if you season your chicken. 
chicken with one, you can finish it with another one. But the everything style, it's like an everything bagel. Use it on chicken. Just trust me. It's so good. And like all it is is you need to put olive oil, the everything style spicy, in a pan with clean oil, olive oil or whatever you want to use. And I made it the other night and Kevin and Drew were like, this is the best chicken. And I was like, it's I cannot got two things. wait. I'm so excited to try all of them. Um, at Jennifer Fisher Kitchen is the food. Is the food? Yeah. So I cook live there every night, just like schlepping my way through, like mm. the hacking my way through the kitchen. Like that's amazing. But it's like not. And I, but I do all my recipes there, and then I'll post it. And the website actually has a recipe section under lifestyle where you can get the salts and all the stuff. I've seen that. And then Jennifer Fisher Jewelry is. All like the, your your, all your, the, Maeve, your Maeve huggies you have on right now, yes. all, all the jewelry, all, all the, the jewelry, things. all the things, all the things. Yay. I have some yeah, too. All the <laughs> yeah. So okay, enjoy. well, thanks thank so much you. for joining me. Thank you for this having was amazing. Me. Stay flight home. I'll see you in LA. Okay. <laughs>